from Calvin's Corner 72. Nice. Wow. I swear it gets tougher and tougher to find this bunker every time. Man. Alright, so the reason why I got you here to show you how to make a primitive arrowhead necklace. So let me show you what I did and then before I get started, I already ripped through this box because when I opened it, I had no idea what I was looking at, but I did some research on it and you guys are not going to believe what's inside here. Please stick around to the end and find out what I got from Calvin, amazing YouTuber. Please go check out his channel, man. The guy is an amazing artifact hunter and sent me some uh, like a cornerstone of his collection to kind of legitimize my collection because at this point I feel like I'm just collecting rocks. However, um, the more and more I learn about this stuff, the more and more I realize that I've thrown away more stuff than I've kept. So please stick around and we'll get to the uh, end of the episode. But first, watch how I make this necklace very easy. It takes about 15 minutes if you know what you're doing. I'm an idiot. I'm unmechanically inclined. So of course it took me about an hour but I'm gonna speed it up and show you how I did it. So here is that small arrowhead that he found made out of Georgia Flint, I'm guessing. I'm gonna make a loop. I'm gonna go around a few times. And on the third pass, I'm gonna knot it. Simple overhand knot, but everything is in the back. My arrowhead's not perfect, 
but it's the best one I have. Thank you, Calvin. And make sure you stick around to the end of this video because I have a special package right there from Calvin's Corner 72. Well, guys, it's not the prettiest thing ever, but any slight challenge of ingenuity is a huge success for me because you guys know I'm mechanically uninclined. After he sent me this, I don't know why, but he sent me another box. And this one says Fragili on it. Fragile. It must be Italian. I think that says fragile. Oh, yeah. It's pretty heavy. Oh, man. Alabama's rich folk pottery tradition began before the Civil War. Alabama and Georgia's pottery history is one of the oldest known in North America, dating back to 2500 BC. The natives who inhabited these areas used clay to make pottery that was tinged red from iron impurities, as seen in these photos. This rock here contains fossilized prehistoric trilobites. Trilobites existed over 500 million years ago and disappeared in the mass extinction with the rest of the dinosaurs. They were among the most successful of all early animals existing in the oceans for over 300 million years. Dude, you shouldn't have, man. This is unbelievable. Oh. Nutting stones or cup stones were mainly used for domestic chores and tool making technology. Indigenous cultures use these stones for processing food, medicine, or pigments, arrowhead production, or even fire drilling. But they most likely represented a primitive form of mortar and pestle. Yep, any type of primitive tool, man, fits in your hand perfect. This Guilford axe is a ceremonial implement made completely from one piece of stone that would have been finely finished. They are rare to find, measuring between 10 and 16 inches in length, and a great spirit blessing. Wow, I'm embarrassed because I barely know what I'm looking at. Oh. Oh, dude, look. Old man on this side. An evil clown face on this side. Wow, <laughs> I got you. I really appreciate it, man. Giving me the great spirit to carry around with me. I mean, dang, all of these gifts. I'm just gonna have to look them up, do research like I always do. And guy, I gotta say, man, I am flattered to have these items that you gave them to me and just honored to cherish them and put it towards my collection that again, I just been collecting rocks like you told me and I'll let somebody else tell me they're just ordinary stones or not just rocks. Oh, that's what you do folks. I really like to get out and explore. I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much, Calvin. And I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>